as a chef de la Beauchardière. Um, he's our NOAA data architect for uh, all of the NCEI data centers. Came out with this NOAA data publication and sharing directive for grants, cooperative agreements, and contracts. And he presented it to our research council. Um, he has a lot of teamwork going on um, with this whole effort. Um, the library is involved. I'm on a metadata and DOI committee with him. Uh, we have a publication and data flow um, uh, program uh, established, but I'll talk a little about his presentation. Um, environmental data, this is a, the directive, environmental data produced using extramural NOAA funding are made publicly accessible. This is a goal. Manuscripts of publications are publicly accessible after a short embargo, up to a year. Data used to support conclusions of peer-reviewed papers are cited and preserved. Um, the drivers for establishing these goals were the President's memorandum on uh, increasing access to the results of federally funded scientific research. It's called PAR, um, its nickname. Um, and that was issued in 2013. And um, the research results, <clears throat> by research results, they mean both the publications and the data. Also a driver for this data sharing uh, uh, goal was the Office of Management and Budget Open Data Policy of May 9th, 2013 and the NOAA Administrative Order on Environmental Data Management. At the end of this presentation, I'm giving you URLs that will lead you to all of these statements. Should your organization be applying for a NOAA grant, it gives you a little heads up. Um, <clears throat> also, gen there is a general agreement that publicly funded data should be made available rather than hoarded because that's really what it is. Um, going back to the PAR uh, directive, um, the President's administration was committed to ensuring that to the greatest extent and with the fewest constraints possible and consistent with law and the objective set out, the direct results of federally funded scientific research will be made available and useful to public, industry, and the scientific community. Um, including peer-reviewed publications and digital data. Uh, scientific research supported by the federal government catalyzes innovative, innovative breakthroughs that drive our economy. The results of that research become the grist for new insights and are assets for progress in areas such as health, energy, the environment, agriculture, and national security. <clears throat> and this is the NOAA Data Sharing Directive, um, the requirements under it. Um, NOAA programs shall ensure that environmental data produced as a result of a NOAA-funded grant, cooperative agreement, or contracts. We have a lot of cooperative agreements across the country, and I believe in the islands, the Caribbean, are made publicly accessible in a timely fashion, free of Hmm. <clears throat> free of charge or at no more than the cost of reproduction. NOAA programs should ensure submitters of proposals and recipients of NOAA funding are aware of their role in satisfying the requirements of this directive. <clears throat> um, that means that they will be informed when they are being considered for a grant or getting money. NOAA programs shall verify compliance by proposers and recipients of funding within the terms of the NOAA um, directive. And NOAA, um, at the risk of losing um, uh, new funding um, that may be applied for. And NOAA and the NOAA library, uh, which is involved in this process, um, shall ensure that all submitted <coughs> pre-publication 
manuscripts produced um, through NOAA funding um, and grants are made publicly accessible free of charge after an embargo period of not more than one, one year. <clears throat> and there are metrics for the reporting to measure um, uh, uh, the compliance um, and the, uh, uh, the degree of compliance. For grant programs, the percentage of data producing proposals, including a data sharing plan, they want 100% of uh, the proposals to include a data sharing plan. And Jen Walton will be talking about uh, this tomorrow. Um, and the percentage of funded data producing um, uh, funded data producing a war that made data accessible shall be uh, <clears throat> within one year of data collection or creation um, uh, deposited, I, I believe. Um, for the NOAA library, uh, the, the measurements are the number of manuscripts submitted by funding recipients to the NOAA Institutional Repository, um, the percentage of manuscripts that acknowledge support using FundRef, which is our um, <coughs> reference, 100% compliance, and the percentage of submitted manu manuscripts that um, include cited data sets used in research, 100% uh, of compliance. Research libraries have a significant role to play along with data archives and scientific publishers in providing a safety net for capturing and retaining the products of scientific research. I think you may agree with that statement after what we've discussed um, just now in this presentation. Um, and I'm going to just ask for uh, you to um, <clears throat> give a little feedback here on the roles of the researcher or data manager and the information specialist um, or librarian in the scholarly life cycle. Um, I've, I've put, uh, I've started here a little bit. Um, the researcher, the data manager gathers data. And uh, what else does the, um, the researcher do? Kristen? In the scholarly life cycle, the research life cycle, publishing life cycle. To, to publish the results of their research. Yes. And Corey. Um, I guess it would be not what they do, but their responsibility to make sure it gets submitted to the right people to be open source. Or yeah, if possible, open source and accessible. Yeah. And accessible. Uh, any other? Um, yeah, Katya. Um, But when we find relevant data and publication, uh, it is the researcher's task to analyze literature data which uh, already cover his sphere of interest, and then he makes his own research. So I think right, analyze, so project planning um, analyzing, at the beginning. Analyzing literature data relevant to his research. Yes, that's correct. Prior to uh, beginning a research project, do a literature search and see what has been done. Um, uh, the, the information specialist will help you with that and help you not to duplicate effort and uh, speed the path of uh, scientific research. Um, any other ideas on the, the role of the researcher or data manager? We can help so, recommend peer reviewers. Okay, help recommend peer reviewers. That's a good one. Um, June? Uh, finding funds for publication, yes. Okay. 
How about uh, creating metadata for the data that's gathered? Is that something that any of you do with your data? How about making um, web landing pages for accessing your data? Um, is anybody involved with assigning uh, digital object identifiers to data? So are you, are you uh, assigning the DOIs to publications or to data? Oh, yes, publication. To publications. And are any of the data managers assigning DOIs to their data? Two different things. And um, Pauline will be speaking about uh, data citation. Uh, I believe she will talk about where to register for DOIs or other methods of persistent identifiers for data. And we, I've, I've given you a head start on what the information specialist does because I may be running out of time. How much time do I have? Oh, okay, I'm not. All right. Um, I think some of you in your, um, your answers, um, when we went around the room, um, talked about repositories and uh, who creates these repositories, um, the information specialist or the IT manager. Um, the information specialist uh, helps to create metadata and uh, metadata standards for discovery and implements these in the uh, catalog uh, records um, in the repository or the online catalog if you have one. A variety of methods of access. Um, the information specialist collaborates with scientists early in the research project as uh, Katya mentioned um, and perhaps helps to create some long-term uh, standards for data archiving along with the data people. Um, and one thing librarians do a lot is play a role in advocating for the documentation of rights and intellectual property uh, in relation to data and publications and Greg yesterday went into um, the Creative Commons. Um, you, um, UNESCO has a wonderful site on international copyright laws. You can go to UNESCO and they have an area where they, uh, you can click on each country and see if they have any copyright laws and what their laws are. And some countries have no copyright laws. So we talked about what your roles were in this cycle. Do you see your roles changing and developing? Um, I think some of you mentioned that you would be moving forward uh, in um, repositories, making, making information and data more accessible, digitizing, creating abstracts. Um, so we all see this role, uh, our roles developing and growing. This is um, a time for growth and change. So um, in, in putting this talk together, um, the CIOS data lifecycle models, um, I urge you to look at those because it may give you some ideas on um, on life cycle management for data. Uh, I think they've gone to uh, quite a bit of trouble to um, uh, aggregate all these uh, these practices and, and some international practices. It may help you to streamline your process or show you something that you don't want to do. Um, and the DCC curation life cycle model is interesting as well. And uh, this is my, it's very tiny, but um, you can um, 
expanded on your screen. These um, are the, um, the NOAA, uh, I hope, models that you might want to use. We are creating a new institutional repository. Previously, we had a limited repository uh, called the Deepwater Horizon repository, and it held um, the results of research and uh, sometimes litigation from the oil spill uh, in the Gulf. Um, and we partnered with the National Institute of Health um, to create that repository. Um, now we are cooperating with the Centers from, for Disease Control. Um, this is to, uh, uh, it's a cost saving measure um, and they are, um, they are um, helping us to put over 11,000 documents, uh, NOAA produced documents, online in a NOAA repository. It will have its own name and its own URL and we expect that repository to be online and public uh, by January of 2016. Um, we're only about a month late in our timeline. Um, it's, um, it's being run on um, Fedora, highly customized, and um, we, some of the um, guiding documents are listed here, our new NOAA administrative uh, orders. Um, some have been revised. They have not published our new NOAA public access policy for scholarly publications. I have a copy of that, um, and I've been talking within NOAA about that. Um, but it's, it's um, a way to document how each division in NOAA will deliver its publications to the NOAA Central Library for ingest into the repository. Each division will be responsible for its workflow. And uh, the, the library also has a workflow uh, document that hasn't been made public yet. In another two months it will be. Um, 